all right everybody assalamualaikum so today we are going to discuss inhalation anesthetics and today we will almost come to a conclusion that what made the sleeping beauty sleep so long right uh, after tomorrow's lecture i will unmute you all and there would be a marked discussion so please um circulate this word in your class that if anybody will not be present so they will lose the mark in fact in fact instead of making it tomorrow um let's give you some time and on saturday okay uh, because tomorrow i will give you um the introduction or even i i'm try i'll try to finish off the general anesthetic in, that are given intravenously okay and then on saturday i uh, there will be no class all right but there will be a discussion session and that discussion session would be marked and you all will come up with your uh, hypothesis that uh, maybe the i think that was a step mom who gave um, the anesthetic to uh, the lady i don't know um or maybe it was a evil witch i don't know i i do i just i have forgotten uh, there was some some lady who gave this girl some uh, drug which made her sleep so long right so we will actually discuss about that that what exactly um can be given in what form so that she will keep on sleeping sleeping and sleeping okay so i will create a whiteboard and you all come will raise your hand okay and you all will come up with your suggestion and by end of the session we will try to um, <laughs> you know uh, sum it up we will try to reach to a conclusion that what can be the possible uh, thing so by saturday there would be no test okay rather there will be um, an oral discussion all right and let's see who participates well and it would be a mock discussion so anybody who fails to show up will get a zero anybody who fails to participate will get a zero okay thank you all right so starting up today we are going to talk about general anesthetic and we are going to talk about the inhalation ones right uh, even in, when you look at the intravenous you do have um, a brief know how that that how exactly they work but today we are more focused towards the naming and how exactly specific medications are working okay all right so directly we are going to talk about that that what is the mechanism of action you see the thing is when an anesthetic is given okay when the inhaled anesthetic is given so what happens is the binding of gaba all right is enhanced and if you remember from the earlier lectures whenever gaba binds to a receptor so it makes the inside of the membrane go more negative right it means more inhibition is there all right and when there is more negativity inside and when there is more inhibition inside the cell so that means we are saying that it is getting hyperpolarized remember all right so the thing is that when we will give inhalation right so obviously the gaba would be enhanced all right uh, binding of gaba would be enhanced and because of that the chloride ions would influx more and because of that there would be more hyperpolarization right so uh, excitability would be reduced and more inhibition would be there right all right so other receptors are also affected by volatile anesthetics for example the activity of the inhibitory glycine receptor in the spinal motor neurons is increased in addition the inhalation anesthetics block the excitatory postsynaptic current of the nicotinic receptor so these are two other proposed uh, mechanisms okay all right so now when we uh, we will talk about halothane as the name suggests halo halo means that right now we are going to talk about halogens and i have inserted the chemical formula of halothane right so according to chemical formula i'm sure you must know that this is like fluorine 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 chlorine and bromine right okay and if 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 you guys are interested towards the chemistry right so 
I'm sure you know about it that fluorine is toxic, right? Whenever it's taken into the body, all right? So uh, its administration is obviously not that much favored, right? Um, even, you know, those frying pans, which have, the, which have that Teflon layer on it, those frying pans are even uh, becoming extinct in devel developed countries because uh, that layer actually has uh, fluorine containing compounds in it. And um, fluorine, as I said, is lethal to uh, the body as it's highly reactive. So you see, uh, this is not good for us, okay? All right, so let's talk about it. That halothane is a prototype. Now, what is a prototype? You see, for example, I want to make a house, okay? Okay, I want to design a, uh, I want to design a villa for myself, okay? So for example, first of all, what I'll do is this, I'll make a prototype of it, okay? What do I mean by prototype? Prototype means that the initial, um, you know, the benchmark of my expectation, right? So uh, that means that this halothane, okay, it was the benchmark, okay? That this is how exactly uh, our proposed medicine should look like, okay? So prototype is the initial one, okay? That was designed initially for, uh, uh, for a specific action, all right? Okay, so this agent is a prototype to which newer inhalation anesthetics have been compared. So why halothane was considered as to be the best anesthetic? Because it was rapidly induced, all right? The recovery was quick and it was non-explosive, right? Okay, so halothane, but right now halothane is largely replaced. And why is that? Let's talk about it. First of all, we'll talk about the therapeutic uses. So it's potent anesthetic, as we have already discussed. It's weak analgesic, is usually co-administered with nitrous oxide, opioids, or uh, local anesthetics. It's a potent bronchodilator, relaxes both smooth, uh, oh, sorry, low skeletal and uterine muscles. And it can be used in obstetrics when uterine relaxation is needed. Uh, it's not hepatotoxic in pediatric patients, unlike its potential effect on adults. Guys, look at this line. This line is the most important line that in adults, okay, the liver toxicity was indicated, all right? That is why uh, we, we try to make sure that how about its effect in children, all right? So in pediatric patients, it's not that much hepatotoxic, okay? So it has a pleasant odor, all right? And because of the pleasant odor, we, uh, it makes a suitable agent to be administered to the children, all right? Uh, however, right now, sevoflurane is the choice of agent, okay? If cost is, of course, not a factor, okay? All right, then coming up to pharmacokinetics. Okay, right now, we are going to talk about halothane, okay? And then we are going to talk about other medicines, okay? And when we say prototype is made, it means that now I will be comparing other medicine in comparison to it, okay? Uh, guys, I must tell you all that uh, when you will open up Lippincott, okay, uh, to study, I hope, all right? So what you'll find is that uh, in Lippincott, uh, there, there is a table made by the end of this subtopic, all right? And when you'll see that table, that table is literally the summary of it. If I were a student, I would have taken up that table and I would have edited that table in order to make my notes, okay? All right, so when you see that table, what you'll observe is uh, there, there's three, five to six columns, okay? I think there's five columns, all right? And then halothane is mentioned in the first column and in the other columns, other drugs are mentioned, okay? And if you look at the language which is used, okay? So for halothane, they have just mentioned the effects that halothane would produce. However, in rest of the medication, they have used the word, <coughs> sorry, decrease as compared to, or, you know, comparative language is used, okay? 
And when this comparative language is used, that means that halothane was the, uh, you can say, the initial drug that was considered ideal, ideal, sorry, and um, rest of the drugs were compared to that ideal drugs, right? All right. So pharmacokinetic. So oxidatively, this halothane is oxidatively metabolized in body tissue, bo body to tissue toxic hydrocarbons and bromide ions. As I said, ions would be formed and these ions are actually toxic, right? So these can produce toxic reactions, especially in female patients, okay? Oh my God, I don't know why I'm hearing this sound when somebody leaves and somebody enters with, okay. All right, I've changed the setting. All right, now this reaction begins as a fever. We, what, what fever are we talking about? We are talking about the iron, the fever that is produced by ions, right? So uh, this reaction begins as a fever followed by anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, and patients may exhibit signs of hepatitis. You see, guys, here we are talking about the liver now, okay? And you see here, they're saying that approximately one in 10,000 uh, people would actually die of hep hepatic necrosis, which is not good, right? So in order to avoid this condition, halothane anesthesia is not repeated at intervals of less than two to three weeks. Uh, okay, so what are the adverse effects? Cardiac effects include vagomimetic. Guys, can you tell me what do I mean by vagomimetic and what would be the effect of the drugs which are vagomimetic? Can anyone of you tell me in the chat box? I'm repeating the question. I'm asking you, what do you mean by vagomimetic? Okay, I'm counting till five and then I'll respond. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, good. Tanzila said, increase vagal stimulation. Very good, Tanzila. I really appreciate you guys, you know, when you participate in the lessons. Uh, you see, she has said it correctly. What happens is that vagal nerve is actually stimulated, okay? Guys, there's a tip and the tip is, Vagomimetic drugs, okay, just correlate its action to bronco uh, beta blockers, okay? Now, if I ask you, what was the effect of beta blockers? So, yes, Cobra, she said, maybe, ma'am, it's decreased heart rate. So, yeah, you're right, right? So, uh, uh, of uh, vagomimetic drug, okay, compare all of its effects as if you're talking about the beta blockers, okay? All right, so what it, it would do is this, it would produce bradycardia, okay? And arrhythmia, right? And, and, and hypotension, where is that? Is, is it not written? Um, okay, I'll see that, okay? These are especially serious if hypercapnia uh, develops due to reduced alveolar ventilation, right? And how do you fix this? Oh, here is written hypotension, okay? So how do you treat hypotension, okay? You give phenylephrine, right? All right, then we'll talk about malignant hyperthermia, which is also called MH, right? So halothane can induce a drastic and uncontrolled uh, increase in skeletal muscle oxidative metabolism, which overwhelms the body's capacity to supply oxygen, remove carbon dioxide and regulate body temperature, eventually leading to circulatory collapse and death if not treated immediately. So recent investigations have in, in identified a dramatic increase in the myoplasmic calcium ion concentration. Strong evidence indicates that MH is due to an excitation contraction coupling defect. Now, what is this excitation contraction coupling defect? It is this, oh, I did not insert an image for that. Okay, guys, I'm telling you orally. It is this that when ex, uh, when over excitation is done, okay? So what, ha what will happen is this, that more and more calcium ions would be released, okay? 
and that will lead to immense contraction okay uh, and this will affect the muscles okay uh, so i want you to google it out okay and you will find just google this terminology excitation contraction coupling defect okay uh, so you will find the mechanism of action that i've told you orally okay in a diagrammatic form all right so born victims and individuals with i think this is uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. What is that? Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is this. That uh, you see the person with this particular syndrome. By the way, it's a genetic one. Okay, all of these are genetic. Okay, so uh, you see, first of all, the person would walk with a tiptoeing. Okay, secondly, there would be a bump kind of a thing here. Okay. And this bump is actually not muscle. This is more of a fat which is accumulated, okay? All right, so uh, burn victims and individuals with Buchan, uh, uh, muscular dystrophy, myotonia, uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta is this that uh, there's brittling of bone, okay? You see, this is a normal bone and here brittles are there, and because of which um, it is more exposed to uh, being broken, okay? It's more vulnerable, okay? All right, so the person who have these conditions, okay, are susceptible to MH. So susceptibility, susceptibility to MH is often inherited as an autosomal dominant disorder. As I said, this is a genetic condition, okay? Should a patient exhibit the characteristic symptoms of MH, then we give dentroline, okay? So it's given as an anesthetic mixture. Um, th therefore, dentroline it should always be available for emergency use. The patients must be carefully monitored and supported for respiratory, circulatory, and renal problems. Use of dentroline and the avoidance of triggering agents, for example, Volatile halogenated anesthetic and sesenilcholine is susceptible. Uh, individuals have markedly reduced the mortality from this condition. Wait a minute. Okay. Now we are going to talk about other drugs which are uh, compared with the prototype, okay, in, the, in that table in Lippincott. So first of all, we'll talk about isoflurane. Wait. Uh, Rabia osteoporosis is when bones get weak, they, they are pores formed. I didn't think so, they are same. I will get back to you on that, but from the Google image, I didn't think so, these are same at all, no way. Okay, but still I'll get, get back to you on that. Okay, now isoflurane. So this is halogenated anesthetic. Um, it is very stable molecule that undergoes little metabolism and is not toxic to liver or kidney, does not induce cardiac arrhythmia and does not sensitize the heart to the action of catecholamines. It produces dose-dependent hypertension due to peripheral vasodilation. It has a pungent odor and stimulates respiratory reflexes um, and is therefore not used for inhalation induction. With higher blood solubility, then disflurane and sevoflurane. Isoflurane is typically used now when cost is a factor. Then we have disflurane. It provides a very rapid onset and recovery due to its low blood solubility. The lowest of all, the volatile anesthetics. Disflurane has a low volatility and thus must be delivered using a special heat vaporizer. Like isoflurane, it decreases vascular resistance and perfuses all major tissues very well because it is, it is irritating to the airway and can cause laryngospasm, coughing, and excessive secretion. So this fluorine is not used for inhalation inductions because it is relatively expensive. It is often used for maintenance during extended anesthesia. Its degradation is minimal, therefore tissue toxicity is rare. Then we have sevoflurane. Uh, 
Kubra, at the end of the lecture, I'll ask you, what are you asking me to teach you? Uh, okay. Are you talking about cytochrome, uh, cytochrome P450 and all that complexes? Okay, right. Kubra, I understand. And even when I was a student and even now, I feel that, yes, this is a, one of the major, uh, you know, hindrances when we are learning ecology. Uh, so, yeah, we will definitely do that. Okay? If not now, so we'll do it later, but we will do it. Okay? Don't worry. Just keep on reminding me. This is one thing that you should do if you want me to do something. Uh -huh. Okay. Now is sevoflurane. Sevoflurane has low pungency. It means low, like that pungent odor, allowing rapid induction without irritating the airway, thus making it suitable for inhalation induction in pediatric patients. It is replacing halothane for this purpose. This agent has rapid onset and recovery due to low blood solubility. Sevoflurane is metabolized by the liver and compounds formed in the anesthesia circuit may be nephrotoxic if fresh gas flow is too low. Then we have nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas. So it is non-irritating and a potent analgesic, but a weak general anesthetic, frequently given at a concentration of 30 to 50% in combination with oxygen for analgesia, particularly in dental surgery. That is why uh, I, I, in some of the movies we have seen that people go crazy, you know, they talk foolishly when they are given anesthesia. Okay, however, nitrous oxide at 80% without adjunct agent cannot produce surgical anesthesia. Therefore, it is commonly combined with other more potent agents to attain pain-free anesthesia. So nitrous oxide is poorly soluble in blood and other tissues, allowing it to move very rapidly in and out of the body. Uh, within close body compartments, nitrous oxide can increase the volume or increase the pressure because it replaces nitrogen in the various air spaces faster than nitrogen leaves. So furthermore, it speeds up uh, movement, uh, sorry, it's the speed of movement allows nitrous oxide to retard oxygen uptake during recovery, therefore causing diffusion hypoxia which can be overcome by administering significant concentration of inspired oxygen during recovery. So this anesthetic does not depress respiration and it does not produce muscle relaxation under usual circumstances of co-administration with other anesthetics. It also has moderate to no effect on the cardiovascular system or on increasing cerebral blood flow and it is the least pathotoxic of the inhalation anesthetics. Therefore, it is probably the safest of these anesthetics, uh, provided that at least 20% oxygen is administered simultaneously. That is it, everybody. Uh, wait a minute. We cannot replace it by... Inhalation anesthetic. Uh, wait a minute. You're saying doctors give flagell tablet during surgery, during or before surgery. Wait, let me stop the recording. Okay, thank you so much, everybody.